Dilly was a slug. Not a metaphorical slug, but an actual slimy Aryan vulgaris. A Spanish slug, if you will. She, I mean, he, they're hermaphrodites, you see. I mean, Dilly was a common slug. I'd call her him chocolate brown with a big grey belly. Not a snail, no shell, you see. And she, he spent life quite contentedly travelling from compost heap to compost heap and eating the odd veggie. And Dilly had a dream. As all slugs do, you see, she, he wanted to settle down and travel to the city with his, her lover, Billy. They dreamt of watching sunsets from bonsai trees and hipster flats, or in a cabbage patch of a small square allotment watching cars go past, taking trips on buses to fall into flower shop buckets of that week's stock. They were going to do it all. Wake up at dawn to watch the early bird catch the worm, not slug, and then nip onto the 143 magic bus to pick a dilly. Dilly wanted to see the gardens, this small paradise in the city. Then they'd bus it back to the fields of fallow, stopping off at Russian Chippy for a nip of fallen lettuce or a fallen kebab's chilli. In the evenings, they'd party on the moss on the side of the canal streets by the party people who would walk on past, not noticing the small lives they were missing as they tripped and ran to catch train or tram, not minding if they were squishing up some small slug's dream plan. And so they set off. Through fields and districts of lakes and peaks, they carried on together. Dilly had the nose for direction, so he, she slimed a map for Billy, headed on from Grove to Green to the A6, where views were less than pretty. Eventually, they hitched a ride on a four by four with a family traveling back from a week of kayaking and late night horror DVDs. No idea of the secret slime hiding on the side of their high undive. Stuck in a jam as arguments began over which takeaway they should get, Chinese or curry or Thai, Dilly and Billy spooned and slimed and dreamt of bright lights and town planned greenery. Jerked awake as they pulled in, Dilly and Billy looked around for some small shrubbery or even a fluffy cacti collection on which to make a bed in, but this house only offered fake plants. Unfazed, Dilly and Billy slimed on from wall to wall until they found a patch of grass, and not just a patch, there were cabbages and leeks and a neat hanging basket on which they made a bed in, and in the morning slimed on past, down the windowsill, onto the ledge, and spent the day watching Cash in the Attic with their hostess. Domestic bliss. But Dilly was wary. She, he wouldn't dare to travel further in. Happy on the windowsill, she, he watched with worry as Billy, always the daredevil, slugged further onto the settee, keen to see Del further into the mystery of the house. Dilly waited. And waited. And waited. Until she, he couldn't wait any longer, excited to see what Billy must have found that kept her him away so long. Dilly slimed trepidatiously under the settee towards the lino paved hallway. Deep, deep into the dark hallway, Dilly drove forward, drawing his, her breath, until she, he felt the cold stone under his, her belly. And in front of the stone lay an onion, and in front of the onion lay, was it? Yes. It was the silhouette of Billy in the doorway of the kitchen lit up by the moon, as beautiful and glowing as ever. Dilly called out. Dilly called out again. And again. went out. And as it did, Dilly saw all their plans in fast motion, sitting on bonsai trees in hipster flats watching the sunset alone, eating cabbage in patches alone, taking trips on buses, white four by fours, yellow trams alone, dancing on Canal Street alone, seeing the hall of Manchester alone and it was not a place to be alone, not for a slug. And Dilly got angry, which was new because slugs don't usually get angry, but Dilly did. Dilly felt the hot fury turn his, her grey belly pink. She, he steamed towards Billy, determined to hit the salt, determined to end it all, to shrivel away so that they could be together forever, determined to... But there were steps. Steps of the hostess. Dilly slid into a crevice and listened. Ooh, another 
on, she said, as she found a piece of tissue paper and squished up Billy, throwing her him in the bin. Settle on the floor and a fresh batch of Saxa for the next victim. Ooh, another one! Dilly played it around and hit her head again and again. Another one! So Billy was not the first. Scores of slugs had been scorched this way, but Dilly would not be. Another one! She, he prayed with a fury to the slug gods on high, and mainly because the slug gods so rarely get prayed to, they did listen. Dilly woke up on the cold stone tile on the floor in the slime. She jumped, seeing her head by the salt. She jumped, she had a head. She jumped, she could jump, she jumped. She was a... She was... A she. She was a naked she, not slug, in the slime on the floor by the salt. And she was... Naked. Totally naked. And on the floor of an old woman's house who would probably have a heart attack, but that would be too quick. She knew what to do. Opening the bin, she found the paper and the rest of Billy. Outside, in the early dawn, she dug a small hole by a garden gnome like a guardian angel headstone to ward off future demons. When the nurse arrived at 7.30, Dilly ran at her screaming and stole her clothes. Let the now naked nurse knock on the door to the hostess and babble about some slimy naked uniform thief and then be sent home. An hour later, Dilly turned up, cool as cucumber, as the replacement nurse, ready to care for this fragile old mother of four children and several grandchildren. Dilly, or Dillis, now pause just for a moment to think over the morality of her plan. Before continuing to pour salt into the pan, just a little bit more each meal so that the old dear wouldn't notice as her blood pressure slipped steadily into 160 over 90. The doctors had warned this might happen. She was always a savoury person, never had a sweet tooth, she would mutter as Dillis placed her in her chair and slammed the door, just to give that heart a little jump. Maybe it was that slam. Maybe it was a different bump or bang in the night, but one sunny morning, no one answered the door. Friends and family swore they hadn't seen it coming, even though she hadn't seen them come in for weeks. No one had visited until they had to. Sweep up the salt from the floor and sell. Attend the funeral and sigh. Oh, well, we told her that diet would kill her one day. And no one really noticed the quietly spoken nurse melt away from the back of the church, stop just to leave a rose by a gnome and travel down the road to the underpass, stepping on to a magic bus at last.